A chilly day in autumn. What's bro yapping about now? I know. It's October 2015. The kids to see a I chilly know. day in autumn. John Brennan receives a weird phone call. It seems to be coming from a stranger. He hesitates Pac-Man, a second, Pac-Man, Pac-Man. then picks up. Hello? John Brennan? Who is this? You're a f***ing loser. If John Brennan hadn't been John Brennan, this might have looked like an ordinary prank call. But John Brennan happens to be one of the most powerful men on Earth, the head of the CIA. Who is this? How did you get this number? It was so f***ing easy, bro. You're such a d***. What do you want? I don't want anything. I already f***ing own you. How much do you want? We want $5 trillion. (laughs) The US government will classify this call as part of a larger conspiracy of identity theft, harassment of government officials, and cyber terrorism. The caller will pay a heavy price for this moment of trollish glory. Why are you doing this? We want you to stop bombing the Middle East. Across the Atlantic, in a house in the West Midlands of England, a 15-year-old kid in his room, the phone still in his hand. He can't believe what he just did. He calls himself Kraka, and he loves to smoke weed. In fact, he's high right now. He's also the leader of Krakas with Attitude. He and his companions terrorized and embarrassed the U.S. security apparatus to a near incomparable degree. They leaked the personal data of police officers, FBI agents, and DOJ officials. They hand-delivered top-secret documents to Julian Assange. Some of the most publicized hacktivism attributed to Anonymous. They call themselves Anonymous. Yeah, it was actually them. In part, for the lulls. And, and this call, call is their story. This was political. Teenager. Cyber attacks. Hijacked the computers of several U.S. intelligence and security a collective or whoa with attitude. Well, really, dude? You're going to... 2008 in Virginia. A different kid who only calls himself Default. He's a pretty typical American teenager. He loves soccer, video games, and his dog. He often clashes with his father, who works in the government. At some point, Default starts cheating in his video games. This gives him the first taste of using computers to do things that you're not supposed to. Exciting, powerful things. He starts learning all that he can about how computers work, and how to get them to bend to your will. 2008 was an exciting time to get into hacking. The decentralized hacktivist group, Anonymous, was in its heyday. If you managed to get into their secret chats, you got a front seat view of their actions. Anonymous is one of the biggest online vigilante groups. Members hack into companies and governments. Now a worldwide and widely recognized hacking group. Hackers with the group Anonymous. Citizens of the world. We have seen the erosion of due process. A cyber war. Anonymous. Anonymous. Anonymous has struck again. Young Default is fascinated. (laughs) Anonymous embodies an exciting spirit of freedom through chaos. They showed how you could force the whole world to pay attention without you having to leave your bedroom. Some anonymous actions are political, some are just trolling, and Default, after tasting this very new kind of power, is keen to learn everything he can about hacking. He starts to hack random websites just for the challenge of it, just to see if he can. But after hanging around Anonymous's chats for a while, he starts to find the group, well, cringe. For one thing, it's crawling with feds. People are getting arrested, and it's tough to know who to trust. (laughs) Anonymous has become so big that vetting people becomes difficult. There's tons of infighting and doxing. Since it's the only hacktivist group most media outlets know about, Anonymous keeps getting credited for the work of other, often more sophisticated hackers. It's a mess. So Default gets involved with offshoot hacker groups, one of them called AnonSec. The group positions itself as anti-Anonymous. But similar to Anonymous, AnonSec performs operations hacking initiatives that sometimes have a political purpose, and sometimes are just, as one might say in 2008, for the lols. I hated recording that. AnonSec is quite advanced and Default gets better and better at the game. The group controls a botnet. A botnet is essentially a large pack of infected computers under someone's control. You can use those computers to further spread malware across the internet to make the botnet larger and larger. Or you could, for example, attack a server with it in order to overload it. Default is tapping around AnonSec's botnet and gets curious about what computers they've actually gotten under their control. He finds that one is a server of the Canadian medical school, Windsor University. Suddenly, Default finds himself with direct access to the university's finances. 
he pulls up records of students who owe the school money. It all adds up to $9.4 million. And at the bottom of the list, something very tempting. A delete all button. How could he not push it? Make sure that they have a rollback in. These people might, no. you know, really enjoy having their slate wiped clean, as it were. Um, if you look, some of them owe a substantial amount of money, you know, like 70000 I think some people owed like oh, upwards of like over 100000 It's a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? It's just like perpetual debt that sometimes it just lasts for decades. So um, just deleted everything. I went into the PHP shell and just like sent everything to DevNull and just like shredded it. So whatever I sent there is just not coming back. This is from the podcast Darknet Diaries. They have a fantastic episode with Default. Of course, this story poses some questions. We tried asking the university if the debt stayed deleted. They did not answer. But usually student loans have multiple on and offline and offsite backups there should be hard copies of the student's signed loan agreements. However, Default feels like he's really doing something at the time. There is a certain rush to committing a crime when it feels like doing the right thing. Other hackers might have used the sensitive student information to make a profit. There's actually a shadow industry worth billions surrounding our most sensitive data. So-called data brokers gather all the info available about us on the internet. Your contact information, browsing history, and online transactions. This data is often bundled into shadow profiles, which are then being sold. You might receive a tailored mail or a robocall based on your shadow profile. In the worst case, someone might try to steal your identity. Oh, and that company it. helps you remove your oh. data from the numerous lists of data brokers. The only guarantee. Despite Incogni's effort, we'll we'll set up 60% discount I on a one-year plan using the trying out Incogni. As recently as 2014, bestiality was legal in Denmark. Other European countries, Germany, the UK, Sweden, had recently banned it. What this meant for Denmark what? was an increase in animal sex tourism. For years, Danish animal rights activists tried to bring attention to this. They called them dog brothels. So sick. It's so crazy. And I had a dog, so that really pissed me off just thinking about the fact, what if someone took my dog and that happened to my dog. I what would is going out. on? So, as Default describes it, he and other anon sec hackers lend their technical skills to the animal rights movement. So, we, I think we took down the official Denmark government website, and then we actually um, defaced it, you know, and said, did you know that your government allows bestiality? And there's bestiality dens where people can go and pay money to do these things to animals and most of them are like people's pets they shut down bestiality websites via ddos attacks and tweet evidence of sexually mistreated animals the information reverberates around the world and is widely condemned anonymous gets credit for anon sex actions which deeply annoys default but it works in part due to the hacks more people know about danish dog brothels they talk about them online, protest them, until the case winds up in Parliament. In April 2015, Denmark finally bans bestiality. Oh, dude. Really? It's like that? While Default is leveling up as a hacker, he also becomes an early adopter of crypto. He accumulates a significant amount of Bitcoin, more than 1,000. This would amount to a lot of money today, somewhere around 40 million US dollars. He keeps these Bitcoins on a hard drive in his room. He also knows he's making powerful enemies, so he gets a bit paranoid, a bit fanatical with his OPSEC. He never logs into his own Wi-Fi, for one. He uses a satellite dish to log into a free Dairy Queen Wi-Fi half a mile away. He's always connecting through a Tor node. Every time he turns off his devices, he makes sure they're encrypted. Yes. When he turns them back on, he has to wait 30 minutes for them to decrypt. For the most part, he never tells anybody what he is doing. He knows he has a lot to lose. Ultimately, it won't be enough. Oh, hello? Back in May 2013, a 29-year-old U.S. intelligence contractor also has a lot to lose. He has his own home in Honolulu, a loving girlfriend, and a salary of over $200,000 per year. But he's discovered a huge secret. 
and it's too big to keep. The US government has the ability to spy on pretty much any man, woman, child on the earth who has come into contact with a computer. And this contractor, unwittingly, has helped make that technology possible. He's haunted by this information and horrified that his government is violating its public civil rights so egregiously. He knows that revealing this information to anyone, a lawyer, a judge, or even Congress, would be committing felonies so severe that he would spend a lifetime in prison. He's worried he'll never see his family again, and he doesn't know what consequences they'll encounter if he blows the whistle. But he has to do it. He's been quietly collecting evidence of this secret for a while, and he's just downloaded the last documents. He tells his employer, the US government, that he needs a couple of weeks off to manage his epilepsy. This buys him a bit of time to leave the country without arousing suspicion. He chooses Hong Kong because he views it as a bastion of free speech. He believes it's one of the few places in the world that could, and would, protect him from the wrath of the US government. There he meets journalists Laura Poitras and Glenn Greenwald, and delivers evidence of what used to be waved off as a conspiracy theory. And so, Edward Snowden becomes one of the most important whistleblowers of our modern time. Snowden's revelations scandalize the world and spark a long overdue debate about individual privacy versus national security. He inspires many young Americans like Default to take a good hard look at how their government functions. Default doesn't want to sit around and let surveillance happen to him. He wants high-ranking intelligence officials to know what it feels like to be spied upon, to have their private information stored and distributed, and to have it used against them. This is when he teams up with the Krakas with Attitude, founded by Kraka, the kid who's always high. Leicestershire, England, 2015. In a housing estate on the outskirts of a sleepy former mining town, there's not a lot to do except get high or go online. In the case of 15-year-old Kraka, he spends his time doing both. He's angry about corruption, about it. surveillance, but in particular, about the U.S.'s involvement in the Middle East. He becomes especially focused on Palestine and sees the U.S. as directly responsible for death and suffering in Gaza. He decides to do something about it. This was political. We heard he was really angry about U.S. foreign policy. So he started a collective called Crackers with Attitudes, and then he hacked into sensitive documents online. One of his first victims is James Clapper, then the National Director of Intelligence of the Obama administration. James Clapper, Jack, this whole thing feels so real. Clapper, one of the highest ranking members of the intelligence community, had his phone number and address waiting to be found with just one Google search. This provides Cracker with enough information to hack into his email. He posts proof of it on Twitter, which catches Default's attention. Cracker then gets the phone calls to Clapper's house phone rerouted to the Free Palestine Movement. Default tweets his respect to Cracker, and the two start chatting. Edward Snowden himself has given James Clapper a very special shout out in an interview with the German broadcaster, ARD. Unfortunately, that interview was blocked from US and German television networks. Apparently the video is immediately taken down every time it's posted on YouTube. So we'll only show the quotes visually. I would say sort of the breaking point is seeing the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, directly lie under oath to Congress. What we do not do is spy unlawfully on Americans, or for that matter, spy indiscriminately on the citizens of any country. We only spy for valid foreign intelligence purposes as authorized by law, with multiple layers of oversight to ensure we don't abuse our authorities. Kraka and Default are livid. Kraka and other hackers loosely connected with CWA team up to target more high-ranking members of the intelligence community. Oh. They want to embarrass them and to show them that they aren't as powerful as they think they are. At the top of their list is John Brennan, head of the CIA. Brennan, like Clapper, has enough information online that he basically doxes himself. Kraka looks up his publicly posted phone number and finds out it's a Verizon number. He calls up Verizon's internal tech support oh, and pretends to be an on-site technician who's having trouble helping a customer on site. Tech support asks Kraka for his employee code and he just makes one up on the spot. It works. The support technician provides Krakow with access, and suddenly he has the account number, the PIN, and John Brennan's private email address. If you have just enough information on someone, pieced together from different sources, say, their address and last four digits of their social security number, you can easily change the passwords 
on all kinds that, of accounts and take these days chat the hacking people do that's like 99 percent of it okay the the hackers okay they just fucking spam the fucking phone phone lines over and over again until they get a fucking like tier one does employee he doesn't follow his fucking protocol and just fucks it up it's just what it is what it, it is. over and that's exactly what Kraka does with Brennan's AOL account. Once he's in the email account, Kraka gets Brennan's private cell number and shares it with default. And so they start spam calling the director of the CIA, relentlessly calling him and his family. I told him he was a piece of shit. Basically, like, y'all are awful people. Like, really. Like, you're not doing any net positive things for the world. You're just not. John Brennan is freaked out. Sure, the calls are a little more than a prank, but how could he know that? At the time, nobody knew who was behind the calls or what their intentions were. Brennan has to lay low for a while in hiding with extra security details for himself and his family. At the same time, Kraka's breach into Brennan's email gives him access to sensitive documents. Kraka first posts screenshots on Twitter, but then, egged on by default, and maybe asking himself, what would Snowden do? He decides to hit up WikiLeaks. Julian Assange himself takes interest. He publishes the documents in October 2015. They include Brennan's 47-page SF-86 application, a sensitive form required for obtaining top-secret government security clearance. The form reveals his criminal history, psychological records, past drug abuse, and other details nobody would want about themselves online. Not only that, from Brennan's emails, WikiLeaks publishes Bush-era recommendations for how the presidency should operate in the Middle East. There's also an internal congressional well, the correspondence from the Senate Select Committee yeah, on I'm Intelligence. I'm gonna join I gotta wash my hands. Hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Chat. Chat. Let's say, chat, let's say, chat, that. I have a government secret, right? And me, me revealing it gives me like um, forever jail because of uh, treason, right? But then I go to, to a hearing, right? And they go, yo dude, yo dude, what about this? Is this true? Boom. If I say yes, I get treason. If I say no, I'm lying under oath and I, I get uh, um, perjury and contempt or whatever the fuck, right? Um, now what? that offered suggestions on how to make future interrogation methods, also known as torture, what? compliant and legal. The breach offer. cost the agency $1.5 million in damages and relocation costs, as several operatives went into hiding before they knew that there was basically no threat level. Above all, it was widely embarrassing. Hacking into Brennan's email was laughably easy. This is true, and it's true that you guys have actually broken into his private email account. How difficult would you say it is? Uh, you mean out of ten? Sure, out of ten. One. One. A lot of, I guess, private information really is, is pretty stupid, really. This is supposed to be so high in the government, like, head of CIA, that it should be a bit more clever. Can you give us any indication of your background? I mean, how old you are? Are you in the United States? I mean, anything you can tell me about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm still the age of 20 years old. Um, I smoke pot, and I live in America. And, and you smoke pot? Ooh. We wonder what John this Brennan must have thought four, while undoubtedly four, watching four this in his relocation house. What fury must have built up Blaze inside it, him. Uh, blaze it and then the, the word, of course. The CWA aren't done. They release more and more information. With control over clappers and other operatives' accounts, it's even easier to get people to give up Ted information doesn't remember that, to in turn uh, access further okay, accounts and it's, databases. You know, you know. They gain access to FBI's deputy director, Mark Giuliano's account. There, they discover a database with personal information of 9,000 Department of Justice officials and 20,000 FBI agents. They post it. They then get access to the Justice Department's joint automated booking system, which has records on all U.S. prisoners. They check out the records of fellow hackers like Jeremy Hammond and post those online as well. They wreak havoc and embarrass one institution after another. Did these kids really think that they were going to get away with it? At the time, I really didn't care. I just like... That was towards the end of the run. It was just like, all bets are off. You know, we had gone all the way down the rabbit hole. I had just become very disillusioned with people's complacency and their lack of care for what was going on. So it's like, 
we're gonna bring attention to this with like chaos and mayhem. Interesting, actually. Kraka knows his actions have poked a very big bear. He knows there will be consequences. He just hey, doesn't know the biggest what they'll exactly be. I'm gonna go to Russia and chill with Snowden. Because I know that the government are pretty mad about this. I'm probably gonna get tortured. I'm actually a pretty fast runner. Default is paranoid the whole time, constantly worried about his OPSEC. But he let his guard down. Default became involved with an ex-girlfriend of one of his friends. According to him, he asked his friend in advance if it's okay with him. The friend says, sure, go for it. He's way over it. But he isn't. Chat, Default chat. and his friend are- Chat, it's always the girls, chat, guys. I swear, chat, guys, guys, I'm not, guys, listen. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say girls bad, but dude, it's always girls. It's, it just, like, I don't know what else to tell you, chat. Like, guys, it's not that, like, it. The girls are bad, but at the same time, like all the big empire builders, like juices across the world, it's always a girl problem. Like, girls, please, man, can you fix your shit? I swear I will fix my shit if you fix your shit. We both fix our, dude, we could do better, dude. Hanging out one night, drinking and Also, that was a, that was a, that was a, that, that was a half so little, so little message. Please get the car back. Running over Xbox Live. Anyway, I slip up for the first time ever. Being f***ing arrogant and cocky, it comes on the news, CIA director hack, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that was us, blah, blah. I was like drunk talking and just totally like gave myself away. He never thought his friend would do anything with that information. Hell, he didn't even think his friend would necessarily believe him. But today, Default is pretty sure this friend turned him in. When the FBI raids you, they don't knock politely. <laughs> FBI agents enter Default's room, just as his computer finishes decrypting. They are pointing assault rifles in his face. They drag him out of his room, flash copy his hard drive before it re-encrypts, and seize all of his equipment. Default knows he's finished, but the worst part, watching the agents carry off his hard drive. A hard drive with nearly 1,000 Bitcoin. He blacks out. Chat, I feel like- Kraka, too, gets ready. Chat, you'd wear like a necklace or whatever, like some ice style shit, right? And it has like a, you know, like a, like a old people, like I fall and I can't get up there, like life alert, and you just go, boom. And it just like, it just fries your shit. Like, it either re-encrypts or it just fries all your shit. It's a code, all the things that you do have out there that you code with it, right? They just all go down. You just go, boom, sup, bitch ass by the British police forces, and his computers are confiscated. It also One has CWA all your member gets arrested in the US, and three more in the UK. And poison, it, kill, it kills you. Since Kraka was underage and in the United Kingdom, he got a lenient sentence. He spent two years in a juvenile detention center. He was the first minor in the UK to be imprisoned for hacking. Today, he's keeping his head down and is done with crime. He just wants to make a career in cybersecurity and move on with his life. He did not want to give us an interview. Default, even though he was less involved, paid a much higher price. He went straight to federal prison with a five-year sentence. He had to pay $145,000 in restitution and due to COVID regulations, spent a significant amount of that time in solitary confinement. While pleading in court, he said, I thought what I was doing was right in terms of political justice. But two years later, I realized I was completely wrong. I mean, that's just part of Snowden, the Snowden, too, didn't have a relaxed time fighting asylum in Russia. Shortly after his leak, intelligence officials publicly fantasized about killing him. Whether you're a principled whistleblower who truly understands the significance of what you're leaking, or a stone teen furious at the world's injustices, messing with the U.S. government will change the course of your life forever. So make sure it's worth it. In December 2023, the Biden administration renewed a very controversial surveillance program. The act allows the administration to spy on anyone in the world without warrant, including its own citizens. It includes a vast database of electronic communications. It's supposed to be accessed only when there's a legitimate reason to believe it will assist intelligence operations. But a US court ruling in 2023 found that the FBI has already misused this database 278,000 times. 
Unlawful Bad. searches were particularly rampant between 2016 and 2020. They've snooped in the private communications of donors to various congressional candidates. They've been watching suspected January 6 rioters, and they've also been surveilling Black Lives Matter protesters. Maybe they're even surveilling us. So what? So what? So what? So what? So what? I go on, I go on internet, okay? And I Google like symptoms for things that I don't fucking have or some shit, okay? I have some pictures that might be odd, like maybe my juicer. So what? So what? Perhaps sometimes the occasional click on some, maybe some, some futa juicer. What about it? Anything else? Anything else? Gotcha. So we good?